Pip and Steve are hoping to buy their first puppy. They've already been advised about the cost and commitment of owning a dog, but with well over 200 pedigree breeds to choose from, don't really know where to begin. Pedigree dogs are split into seven main groups. The breeds in each group have some common characteristics and personality traits. The manager of the Kennel Club's Assured Breeder Scheme, Bill Lambert, has organised a mini dog show to introduce the groups. Arriving to represent hounds is a champion Afghan hound, Desi. Taking time out to introduce working dogs, a 21-month-old Newfoundland called Breeze. Taylor, the Manchester Terrier, is flying the flag for the Terrier Group. Simon the Pug is showing what tiny toy dogs are all about. Rachel is a 22-month-old Bracco Italiano and an ambassador for the Gum Dog Group. The pastoral group is in the capable paws of Pebble, Polish lowland sheepdog. And last but not least, Leila, five-year-old Chow Chow, here on behalf of the utility group. The big advantage of choosing a pedigree dog is that you can be pretty accurate in predicting their character, temperament and how much exercise and grooming they need. Plus, it's well known which health issues affect certain pedigree dogs, so you can check breeders have health tested the parents in order to have the best chance of breeding healthy pups. Of course, crossbreed dogs can also make fantastic pets, but you can't be certain how much of which characteristics or health problems they may have inherited from each of their parents. Hound group is quite a diverse group. These are hunting dogs. Uh, the Afghan hound, for example, and the greyhound dogs like this are dogs that have been trained to actually um, hunt by sight. And therefore, they have, still have those correct characteristics today. They will tend to chase things. They are a dog that needs a lot of exercise. They're a diverse group. We have here the Afghan hound, which is a long-coated, athletic dog. But also in the, this group, we have the Basset hound, which is a short-coated, short-legged dog. So it has different requirements. However, they still will, do have that desire to hunt. They still will to follow and chase things. They're not a dog that you can qu quickly think, I can let this dog off at lead at any moment. They will tend to go and, and, uh, go and follow their nose or follow their sight. Next representative is from the working group. This is the Newfoundland and the Newfoundland is a water dog. These are dogs that were used to help man and that's what the working group is. They tend to be very trainable, highly trainable, highly intelligent. Again, it's another diverse group. The important thing is to think carefully and speak to breeders about the purpose that those dogs were bred for because they will still have some of those characteristics today. So as I said, the Newfoundland was a rescue dog, very much a water dog and, and even today, you have a Newfoundland, sees a lake, it will probably want to go in there. Next we have a representative from the Terrier Group. Now the Terrier Group, again, were dogs that lived with people, lived as often as family dogs, but very much dogs that were bred for a purpose. Uh, often uh, a Manchester Terrier here was bred originally for, for uh, chasing rats, and people had them in their house to keep the rats and keep, keep the mice down. However, they are a great family dog, very busy. Terriers tend to be busy and enthusiastic, can be quite stubborn, but they do make great family dogs. Can be quite vocal, can, can bark a lot, um, but they are a dog that live very well as a family dog, so very much one that, that I would suggest you should consider. Next we have a representative from the pastoral group, which is the herding group. And this includes all the sheepdogs, like this for example, the Polish lowland sheepdog. Obviously got a very dense coat, needs lots of grooming, has a very active mind, highly trainable, highly loyal, loyal dogs, do like living as, as part of the family. Uh, but they are a dog with a brain, a dog that you need to keep thinking about what it's doing and, and give it a, effectively an activity to do. Next we have a representative from the toy group. Now the toy group have been bred for their size to make small dogs, very much companion dogs, but again it's a really diverse group and here we have a pug. Now the pug is, a, is a, one of the brachycephalic dogs, the dogs with a short nose, so they don't necessarily like a uh, lot of hot weather. They're not a dog you want to take for long walks on a hot day, for example. But they're very loyal dogs, a great companion dog. Um, we find that they live very well with people. Not a dog that likes to be left on its own, that's for sure. And actually, a pug is not a dog that needs an awful lot of exercise. So if you had a fairly sedentary lifestyle, that may be one of the dogs that you'd wish to consider. 
Next we have a representative from the Gun Dog Group. Now these are obviously by my name, they are dogs that are trained to the gun, work with man and are highly trainable to retrieve and flash game often. Here we have a Bracco Italiano, fairly new breed to the UK and therefore not that easy to come by but they are a dog that you should perhaps consider if it fits in with your lifestyle. Um, highly active dog, will need lots of exercise. Um, it's a dog that you need a good well fenced in garden if you're to keep him in because he will want to go and uh, do things that hunting dogs want to do. Um, but they are a very loyal dog, very good family dog and will, will live well with other animals as well. And last but not least we have a representative from the utility group. Now utility are all the group dogs that perhaps don't fit into any of the other groups but they're general all-purpose dogs. And here we have a Chow Chow. The Chow Chow, very ancient breed. Um, originally it was a sled dog but was used for many other purposes in between and there are a number of sled dogs that are similar in appearance to the Chow. But the Chow's a very in individual dog. They look like a great big cuddly teddy bear, but actually they can be rather an aloof dog and not a little bit wary of strangers from time to time. But they do are very, very loyal to their family and, and do love their close family networks. The Kennel Club has detailed information on individual pedigree breeds on its website. And on dogsclub.tv, owners of Britain's top 10 breeds reveal what they're really like to live with in special video profiles. Pip, Steve and Ella have been left with plenty to think about. Next time, Bill's guiding them step by step through the puppy buying process.